looking at the tail of the tape. I think the big thing that tilts this slightly in Josh Kelly's favour is that we're two years on. He's gone from 24 to 26 years old now. He's peak. Avanesian, he's certainly not old, but he's gone from 30 to 32. I don't think that delay has necessarily helped David Avanesian, but it may well have helped Josh Kelly. Well, it's been a long time coming. Both fighters had the will. Their teams found a way. 12 rounds for the EBU European welterweight title. Avanesian versus Kelly to talk you through it at the commentary desk. Tasha Jonas and Nick Hallin. Thanks, Chris. The one we thought we may never see happen. Finally, it's here. It's arrived. Is it a coming of age night for Josh Kelly? Is it a turning back? The youngster time for David Avanesian. The defending champion from Russia, although he's based in the UK and has been for the last few years, is the man in the black trunks, Kelly, in the red and white of his native town, Sunderland. And all the uh, experts say the one thing that Josh Kelly cannot do is just coast through this one, that he needs to maintain a work rate. Can't switch off. Can't stand back and admire his work. It's an interesting one. This fight, you look at it, you can make a compelling case for David Avanesian. Then you can flip it on its head, make a compelling case for Josh Kelly. And both arguments would carry a lot of weight. Yeah, it's in the big fights like these that records and form and all that stuff kind of just goes out the window. Um, and, and, you know, the fighters are here and they want to they make a statement, both fighters. It's a fight that may well go the distance as well. Just uh, the one stoppage loss for David Avanesian. Uh, as you heard Chris say, that uh, came against Ikidius Kavaliauskas, who can knock a small building over. Yeah, what's interesting here, Nick, in the early goings is Kelly, A, is not giving up ground too easily, which is always going to be key. But he just got into that kind of Philly shell stance, and that's because Avanesian likes to set up those straight shots down the middle with a wide left hook. And with that Philly shell stance, the right glove can just catch those left hooks on the turn. And already Kelly's thinking in those first and third phases, slipping, making Avanesian miss and countering him. Really, really sharp start from the Sunderland man. This is good stuff so far. Reddening up already, Kelly. I don't know if that's a cut or whether that's just a, you know, whether a glove has just scuffed him there. But there's definitely some kind of marking coming up. Yeah, he does mark quite easily, uh, Josh. I think you'd have seen this in the amateurs uh, over the years as well. Oh, Tash just gets quite, quite red quite quickly. There's nothing too much to be concerned oh, about. This is, this is sharp. This is really sharp from Kelly. Picks some beautiful punches to the body, then switched upstairs quickly. Well, he's uh, asking some questions of the champion here, right in this first round. And that's the kind of movement that he's going to need to keep Avanesian at bay. Slow start, this from the Russian. But a very sharp and fast start from the challenger. Lovely uh, rolling there to keep himself out of trouble. Well, Josh Kelly is looked after by the highly intelligent, very, very experienced Adam Booth. I think Adam Booth will be very, very happy with the way this first round has gone. Caught him with a lovely little left hand there right on the belt. Yeah, he will be very happy, uh, Nick, and I'll tell you why. Against Ray Robinson, uh, and, and in his last two or three fights, in fact, when he doesn't want you to hit him, you can't catch Josh Kelly. When he's thinking defensively, it's that old expression, it would be hard to hit him with a bag of rice. What he's doing now, and he's already started to do in this first round, is slip and make Avanesian pay. And that's what he didn't do against Robinson, and he didn't do against Winston Campos. He's already started to do that, which shows he's got confidence, he shows they've drilled the right things. It's not just about making Avanesian miss, it's about catching him in return, and he's done that already. And also, when you're getting countered with everything that you throw, you become more more reluctant to throw it. Because if you, if you throw a shot and you get encountered every time, then you'll, you're going to switch to a different shot and, and move to a different tactic. And that's what he's making him do. He's, he's being very reluctant to, to throw any shot. And that is not David Avanesian's game at all. Let's see if Carl Greaves and his team can just fine-tune 
Avanesian a little bit here. The second round, the first, not good for him at all. Oh, again, it's the speed, lovely left hook combination downstairs and upstairs. And Avanesian seeing these jabs, but they're keeping him occupied. As you said earlier, Chris, I think it was you that said it, Chris, he's rehydrated. I mean, he looks huge in there, Kelly. Yeah, he does, and they always say mistakes in the amateurs can repeat themselves in the pros, it, and it's no secret that he did have some, some problems with his weight, he did balloon up at points, and, and, you know, we've talked about that, and he has to work hard uh, on his weight, it's not something that comes easily or naturally to him, uh, and, uh, and clearly, you know, the first fight, one of the reasons for him getting, well, I think it was because he was absolutely drained at the weight, and I think, I think there's a correlation between the... The, the two he didn't get it right and I think he, he's made the adjustments and clearly has, has got things right this time around he looks much stronger he looked fresher at the weigh-in yesterday and, and as you say rehydrated looking at a completely different specimen to, to what we saw even a year ago you've talked about this all night Tash man strength I mean he really looks like he's got it doesn't he Kelly here yeah his, his muscles oh are a big left hook caught Avenis he was wide open there and stunned and Kelly is looking for the early night here. Make him come into it. Come to it. Well, even if Avanesian has managed to recover from that, there's a warning sign for the champion. He can be stunned and he can be hurt, and Josh Kelly knows it. Well, the first round wasn't good for him. The second round's getting even worse for David Avanesian. There's blood coming from somewhere. Yeah, I don't know that's a cut on said. the back of the head by the look of it, Tash, I think. I don't know that, how that's happened. I think he's too bothered about it. Yeah, it is. It's, on the, uh, it's in the scalp now. Avanesian knows he needs to get a reaction to being caught like that. Might not bother him, he's losing a lot of blood yeah. from, from that, that cut. Pouring, yeah. isn't it? Well, it always does pour from the top of the head. Absolute spearing jabs. He's raking those jabs through here, Josh Kelly. And I'll tell you, Avanesian really needs to settle down because if he starts to press this, he's going to make mistakes and leave himself open. There's a, a lot of blood. Most of it round the back and the side, but uh, all over the place at the moment here from Kelly. Yeah, and so good. Look at the separation after he unloaded. And, and that jab, that's turning into a weapon as well. Well, the unusual position in the corner for, for Josh Kelly, where Ian Johnson, of course, the cut man's role normally, if there's a bad cut, they are the one that takes centre stage because only one person could be in the ring at any one time. But, of course, Ian Johnson's got the, the rare luxury of being able to work on the cut from outside the ropes. I think it was the elbow there that, uh, that contacted the back of the head. And they're just going to want to stem the flow just because, of course, if he's losing a lot of blood, um, that's never a good thing in the middle of a fight when your blood pressure's high anyway. So... He'll work, uh, he'll work on that. But look, uh, that aside, he's, he's made a very, very good start, Josh Kelly. Really has. By the way, Ian Johnson's going to be very cross with you. He's Jumbo. Nobody calls him Ian. He doesn't like that. He is Jumbo. I, 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 I apologise for that. Yeah, of course he is. <laughs> he's a good cut man, Jumbo Johnson. He's a, he's a good chap as well. Yeah, he is. Cut men are always good guys. Have you noticed that? Some of the nicest guys you'll meet. Round three. Yeah, he's had a few to work on as well. He had that Huey Fury against Pulev where, where his eyelid was all but hanging off. So he's seen a lot worse and, and you can have far, far worse people in your corner to, to deal with a bit of a cut like that than, uh, than Jumbo. And the thing for Josh, it's not on the front. It's not in his line of sight. There's no bit of eye hanging down that you can see that's putting you off. So all them things are, are positive. When it's at the back and you can't see, you know, it is what it is kind of thing. Well, it's not bothering him in the least. Avanesian, that we're only in the early stage of the third round. It, it's almost a, just a good little sense that he's getting a bit desperate here. But he's been completely outboxed through the first two rounds. Now, up in the trying to up the tempo here, but you, this, this jab of Kelly's is is some weapon. That was nice. Kelly did uh, Kelly did take a left hand there. Avanesian with a rare moment of success early in this third round. And Kelly again creating that separation. 
but he is taking some risks trying to get in here, Avanesian. One thing that I don't think many people really know or, or wish to acknowledge about Josh Kelly, there's a lot of dog in, in him, you know, over the years, because of how he looks, he's, he's, a, he's kind of a commercial uh, dream, and, and because of the way he boxes, you kind of think he's one of these people that would be a bit risk averse, a little bit shy of a trade-off, but actually, he's quite the opposite. He's got a real spirit, he's got a real dog, and he's got that, that fight that you need as a boxer. If things get tough tonight, he, he won't just suddenly be a fish out of water in there. And, and of course, that is Avanesian's game plan, and they don't necessarily know that, that Kelly's got spirit and resolve, and he doesn't need to, to really have to find out because of the skill set that he's got. But already looks a bit of adversity. There's a huge amount of blood coming out of that cut. And at some level, at, at this you know, length of a fight, it could start to affect him. Um, but, you know, he's used to that. He's, he's been in the trenches in the amateurs, um, gone through some really hard Olympic qualifying rounds, gone out to Rio, faced some tough, tough opposition. And, uh, you know, he's not a guy that things start to get tough in the trenches, he's just going to fold. Oh, hello. Uh, Venetian trying to force the issue here. Close it down, get off first like he did there with that right hand. Last few seconds of the third round. That's a nice body shot, he doubled it up as well. It's the first round in the fight, guys, that... Avanesian looks like he started to settle. Not saying he won the round, but there was a little bit more of the David Avanesian that we've seen in the past in that last round. Yeah, I think I think we always knew that you know Josh's speed and his his, his head movement and his body movement was, would cause him troubles, but he, he was starting to get the timing a little bit better there. He was starting to come in and, and get into a little bit of a comfort zone and a little bit of a rhythm, which we hadn't seen in the first two rounds. That's the fight, of course, Nick, that everybody's talking about down the line is is potentially Josh Kelly and Conor Ben. I think overlooking uh, just a just a small matter of David Avanesian tonight. But of course, if he does come through this, that is the fight that the public want to see. That's where the demand is. In the bumper. In the bumper. It's like everybody wants Conor Ben. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't. Virgil Ortiz wants Kelly. I mean, everyone's talking about what they want, and uh, as you say, David Avanesian's got his own plans. <laughs> It was Carl Greaves we could hear talking in the corner, a very experienced and knowledgeable British trainer. You heard him just say that you'll wear him down in the later rounds, and that obviously is going to be the game plan. Try and draw him into a bit of a battle and see if you can make a breakthrough in the latter rounds. Don't be discouraged early. As you say, all that head movement, the reflexes early on from Kelly have been so impressive. I wonder if uh, Avanesian can build on that slight encouragement that he got in the, uh, the previous round, but Kelly looking sharp again here and just letting it flow. Adam Booth leading the applause in the Kelly corner. Boy, he brings that jab up from so low, but it's so accurate and so sharp. This is Josh Kelly starting to get into his rhythm now, and that's what he is, a rhythm fighter. If you let him get into that, or you start to let him lead the dance and chase, that's when you can be in real trouble. And Avanesia needs to be really careful here. Just let Kelly just get into his rhythm, have the space. You can see that confidence growing. You can see that the little step in his, the, the spring in his step, rather. And this is where he wants to be. This is him dictating the fight on his terms. Let's call him again there. No, Avanesia trying to force the issue. Kelly just saying, yeah, there you go. You can get the body, but you can't hurt me. And there he is, gone again. Lovely footwork. Yeah, just drawing him in, saying, there you go. Have some of that. Look at that looking down. Use of the eyes there to try and fool Evanesian into where the next attack is coming from. It's a real Adam Booth trademark, that bringing that jab up from, from the hip area. 
And uh, again, though, another look at the uh, referee. That's the second time he's done that in this round, Kelly. A little glance over at Victor Lachlan. As uh, Avanesian looks to try and rough his man up here. Looks like Kelly's eye as well has just swelled up. Yeah, I, think I don't know if he's complaining about something that's hit him in the eye. I, there's a clash, and I think that, that well, it's very hard to tell, but I think there may be a cut over the right eye. But of course, the, the amount of blood that's coming from that cut at the back of his head, it, it's, we're only really going to know when we get in between rounds. But it does seem to be a stream of blood pouring from his right eye. I think it may have been a clash of heads, and that's what he was trying to indicate to the referee. Yeah, they're saying in the Avon Eastern corner that you are busting him up. Well, he's certainly got the marks of battle. Josh Kelly and Avanesian is full throttle now, and yeah, definitely cuts at the right eye. And Avanesian almost struts back to his corner there. If you're Avanesian, you want to you want to take Josh Kelly's confidence away. You don't want a, a confident Josh Kelly doing what he wants, picking you off, hitting you with single shots and rolling. <laughs> Now you see the cut man centre stage. So just keep winning the point. You understand? Keep winning the points because if it gets stopped because of the cut, it goes to the scorecard. Is it goodbye? Huh? Is it fine? It's open. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Just win the round. Nice deep breath. Give him a drink, Charles. Nice deep breath, Josh. Uh -oh. Clash confirmed, and Adam Booth just spelling out the circumstances for Josh Kelly. See if we can see how this happened. Oh. Oh, no wonder he looked at the referee. There's a bit of concern as well in Adam Booth's voice when he's saying that, win the round and, you know, just win the round and then it'll go to the scorecard. It, 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 it could possibly be a bad cut. Yeah, I think just reiterating, wasn't he, in the corner, what was actually important there. It doesn't matter if it's a bad cut or not, because we can't change that now. What is important is that you win the rounds ahead, so that if it does go to the scorecard, you are ahead. I, I think he is clear ahead at, at this particular stage, but uh, look, we just don't know how that cut is going to progress, and, and we'll, we'll have to wait and see. Avanesian now goes to the body. A bit more success with the body, landing clean upstairs is uh, proving pretty tough for Avanesian here. Oh, that was smart of Adam Booth though. I mean, in the heat of battle, sometimes guys, they, they lose their focus and Adam Booth just said, here is the situation, so don't worry about that cut. Just go out and keep winning, keep winning rounds. But Avanesian really is building up ahead of steam here and this fight is starting to unfold as we thought it might. I think a lot of people looked at this and said Kelly wins the early rounds, but if Avanesian is still there, he can come on strong late. Kelly's just leaning on him and he doesn't really need to be there. He needs to get back to doing what he was doing before and hitting and moving and, you know, taking his, taking his confidence away by making him miss and making him pay. And now he's trying to stand there and lean on him and trade with him, which is not a big strength of his. Well, if he can out-muscle David Avanesian up close, that'll be a, a big, big step for him. But that's easier said than done. But he really is trying to be the tough guy in there at the moment. And as you say, Tasha, I don't think David Avanesian would have expected that. And I'm not sure how much success he had doing it either. This is where he can be damaging. Keep that separation. Like that. Yeah, the same thing with Jordan Gill earlier though, you, you know, you have to show a little bit of everything against these come forward fighters, you can't just give them momentum, momentum, momentum and step off and step off and step off, you have to at times get in the pocket with them, you have to stick it to them, you have to push them back and you have to show them you can mix it as well. It was one of the criticisms of Levy against Josh Kelly, he doesn't stand and, and trade enough and show us a little bit and he's showing it now and he's digging in and, and there can be no question that he's showing a different side to his game in these first five rounds than we've seen in, in his previous few fights already. Yeah, absolutely. It really is opening up here. Yeah, he's getting caught a little bit more in this round, Josh. Um, he's, you know, he's still hitting and moving, but he, he's getting caught with, with shots as he's, as he's staying there, just that second, split second too long. And we're not even at halfway. Avanesian may be behind, but I think he'll be feeling 
the game plan is starting to work. The game plan is clearly break Kelly up. When you started walking down, you head back from me. Nice deep breath. Nice deep breath. Nice deep breath. Are you listening? Yeah. Are you listening to me? Are you going to be calm and strong? Close up, make him, make him lead and back him up. Okay? Let your hands go sharp and then go small again. Do you understand? Yeah. Clean defence, back him up, sharp hands, go small. Well, this is where we saw him trying to just get up close. It could have been because he was... Uh, roughed up a little bit, just needed to uh, change the dimensions again. But talking of dimensions, you heard what Adam Booth said there. After you've unloaded, make yourself small. Round six of this battle for the European welterweight title. Well, claimed by David Avanesian in Spain, in Bilbao, against Kerman Lejaraga. They wanted the rematch, they got it. And uh, Lejaraga was blown out inside a round. He then went back to Spain, stopped Jose del Rio in Barcelona. And neither of these two fellas have had a fight since December 2019. A, a gap of over 400 days for both of them. Yeah, well, for for, uh, for, for Avanesian, rather, it's almost two years since he was stopped by Kavliowski. So in that time, he's, he's boxed less than 11 full rounds in two years. Now, of course, He's, he's been victorious in those. The Haraga took in nine rounds the first time, won the second, and of course Rio was, was won as well. So he's been victorious in that and through no fault of his own. But you know, he hasn't really shown any signs of that inactivity. He was a little slow to start, but he's now fully in the groove here. And, uh, and that was my only real concern from going into this was just the lack of, uh, of ring rounds that he's done in the last couple of years. But uh, well, he's, a, he's a seasoned professional and uh, no signs of rust from him at this stage, certainly. No, absolutely not. No, it really has warmed up now. The blood continuing to pour from all over the place. From Josh Kelly, most of it from that cut around the back of the head. But Avanesian really is starting to build up a head of steam in this fight. Big jolting left hand from the Russian. And he's catching Kelly cleaner and more regularly now. These were the shots that uh, Kelly was making him miss with earlier. A lovely combination. He's followed it up and Kelly's in trouble. Pushed down, and there is a count. Well, the pressure's been coming, it's been building. And Kelly still has a minute to go here in this sixth round, and Avanisi will be straight back on him. Landing clean again. Well, Kelly's really got to be careful here. The legs are all over the place. Absolutely gone, and Adam Booth thrown in the towel, and it's all over. Josh Kelly unraveled, and David Avanisian has overcome a slow start to retain his European welterweight championship in some style. That was a ruthless finish. Caught Josh, I think, with a shot just around the temple ear kind of thing. Once you get, we've seen Pricey, myself, you know, Joshua, when you get caught with them type of shots, we talked about shots earlier, and, you know, you just can't get your balance. You, your brain is there, you're telling your body to do stuff, and it just won't react and just won't do it. And there has been some bad blood in this in this build-up, guys. You know that's no secret. Um, it's all been kind of quashed this week, and there was a level of of respect between the fighters and, and between the teams. And I, th I think it was more really the teams than the fighters themselves that that kind of had um, a, a little bit of needle, as we say here. But um, you know, speaking to Neil Marsh earlier on today, he said I have no doubts that. Avanesian will, will stop Kelly. He said we may we may be behind going into the second half of the fight. He said I, I expect us even to be maybe five rounds down after the first six. He said, but I can tell you that in between six and twelve he will get that stoppage, and I'm completely confident. And you know, you look into somebody's eyes and you know they believe the words that they're saying. He sees his man, and uh, well, he uh, he turned out to be right. And let's give credit where it's due. You know, we're so quick to jump on referees, we're so quick to jump on, on corner people when they don't throw in the towel. Adam Booth, seeing that his man was in trouble, and he's, he's made the right decision and, and pulled him out. Well, if there was any doubt at all, he's getting oxygen on that on, on that stool right now. So, yeah, no question. No question at all. 
stay where you are. For and we've seen the towel yeah. thrown in in the last two fights, and you couldn't fault either of them. That earlier stoppage when Ian John Lewis made that stoppage with the big heavyweight Matt Gordon. That was another good stoppage as well. And this one, as you see, as you say, Tash Kelly was absolutely sold out. Very difficult this for, for Josh Kelly to know what he does next and, and where he goes. You know, this was a make or break night for him. And as much potential as, as he has and as good as he was in those first couple of rounds, things just on fight night, as, as great as he's been in the gym and as much talent as we know he has, just haven't really come together on fight night. And, and I know from speaking to a lot of his camp mates over the last year, he couldn't have put more into this camp. He couldn't have prepared any more thoroughly. He's been meticulous to, to a point where where Shannon Courtney described him to me yesterday on the phone as almost unapproachable at times. He, his focus has been that tunnel visioned. And so to, to see a man in, in, in his state there, given everything he's put into this, how long he's waited for that opportunity, this is, Tash, going to be very difficult to bounce back from for, for Josh Kelly. I mean, we, we have this thing in boxing about this carry and this O, and, and you have the pressure of the O. Um, and, you know, very few boxers actually leave the game especially the professional game with that oh but we we seem to cherish it and want to keep hold of it and and you know once it goes it's like it seems the end of the world you can't pick yourself back up from this you know there's plenty of you know history show shows that you can but what i will say is that you know he was the top runner at this week division in in our country and now the momentum seems to be swinging with Conor ben well, this is how it all unraveled Absolutely sharp and fast, and uh, that was that combination that uh, sent him to the floor, and he was in serious distress then. And this, this is one of the worst fighters in the world to be in trouble against because Avanesian will not let you off the hook. Absolutely clinical finish, and he still wasn't right, was he? And Adam Booth watching, saying, "You know what? I've got to make a decision here." And the legs had completely gone, and that was it. There was two hooks, lead hooks. There was an uppercut and there was lead hook, lead hook after that. And there's the place, the way it lands, it doesn't land like a clean shot. It's a bit like for open hand fist around the back of the ear. And and that's just, it just takes it, it takes his legs from. Speaking to Darren Barker earlier on today, describing that feeling, he said you, you can actually feel not too bad in your head, but once your legs go, that, that's it. And and of course you are then moments away, one punch perhaps from from being completely lights out. And uh, so Adam Booth absolutely did the right thing. All the officiating has been good tonight. The the judging when it's been required. So no complaints from from that point of view. And that's uh, that's one positive to take from this evening certainly. And, and David Avanesian showing that uh, being a former world champion. Is uh, not a career ender, not at all. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Victor Laughlin accepts the retirement of the blue corner. The official time of the stoppage, two minutes and 15 seconds of round number six. Your winner, and still the European welterweight champion, David.